That's you or me. I think that's me. <clears throat> All right, and welcome back, folks. We are <laughs> sitting here with current Denham Springs High School principal Wes Howard. He's on the viewer's right. And former Denham Springs High School principal Kelly Jones sitting on the viewer's left. He's now at the central office. Good morning, gentlemen. We're here. Good morning. We're here at Denham Springs High School. Y'all are close enough to six feet, right? For, yeah, closer, we go. for, for social distancing, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, we're here today to kind of talk about, you know, the difference between this and the flood. This community's gone through two disasters, call it what you will, uh, in the past four years. One of the things that came up is this freshman class went through the flood as freshmen and are now seniors kind of wrapping the year, wrapping their high school career up uh, with the coronavirus. Um, we, now, they might be coming back to school. We're looking at April 20th, correct? Because of spring break? Right? Yes. So, um, you know, let's, Principal Howard, let's start with you a little bit. You were at Denham Junior for the flood, correct? That's right. Yep. Uh, so talk to us a little bit about your, your flood experience. We don't have to go too far into it. We've, that, that's in the past. But just tell us a little bit about that and then kind of compare it to this. Comparing the two uh, is very difficult. I mean, when the flood came through and, and you know everybody had to tear up their houses, repair their lives, and really rebuild, everything was visible, it was tangible. You could touch it, you could feel it. Good Lord, you could smell it. It was everywhere. You knew what the flood meant. You knew that there were things we had to do to recover from the flood. It was obvious to the community and the kids that there were steps that needed to be taken to go from point A to point B. This is a lot different than how it feels because you don't get to see coronavirus. You don't get to see what's happening around you. You see restaurants are closing, hours are being restricted, you know, there's no toilet paper on the shelves. But as far as what do I need to do to fix this, there's <clears throat> there's really very little control individuals and our especially our kids have over fixing this. You know, there's nothing to pick up and move. There's no hammer to go and, you know, nail drywall on the wall. There's nothing to physically change to make the situation better. It's a wait and see. And that's tough for kids. Kids got to move. Kids got to have something to do. Kids have to have direction and purpose. So we're trying to provide that to them as best we can. And it's such a different, such a different environment than what we had in the flood. And being at the end of the year, it's especially challenging because back in August, we knew we're headed back to school at some point. Now, we're looking at how much time can we have left at the end of school. Right. So you, uh, you both have children currently in the system. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, so I, you made that comment of kids, kids got to have structure, they got to be moving, they got to be doing something. You know, uh, your, your daughter was a National Merit finalist. Yes. I know your son is a, is a deep snapper, mm -hmm. going, looking to go somewhere. Uh, you know, just from a personal standpoint for both of you, tell us a little bit about what it's like at home because you have kids that are in this system trying to deal with that. Mm -hmm. I'll let you go okay. first, Let's talk well, about yours being a senior. Right, right. being a senior, she's a, you know, I, I do hear the concerns from her about what's, what's going to happen to prom, what's going to happen to graduation, what's going to happen to, you know, for example, AP exams. And a lot of those questions we just don't have answers for yet. And I wish I could tell somebody, you know, this is our plan, this is what we want to do. But until we have a better idea on the, uh, the impact that this closure is going to have on us, we can't set anything down in stone. And I just can't, I can't say we're going to move the state to here because there's just so much uncertainty. Um, what I do want to make sure the seniors out there especially know, and I've told my daughter this, and I'm sure she's told her friend groups as well, um, is that there's going to be something. We're going to have something. Uh, what that looks like, we can't predict right now, um, but those seniors, having come into their high school career with the flood and leaving it with Corona-19, um, uh, they have to have something, and we're going to provide that for them. They, they deserve it. They just deserve it. Sure. And, you know, I would uh, just kind of feed off of what Mr. Howard said. You know, I would, you know, say that being in my new position at the school board office, as a whole, our parish uh, parents and uh, students have been very understanding. Even those people that are angry at the situation, they're not angry with us. They're angry with coronavirus. They're angry that it has uh, disrupted their schedule. 
uh, as far as what's going on with them, but they've been very understanding that uh, they watch the news and they see that this situation is changing, not just by the day, but sometimes by the hour. We're getting new directives from the governor, uh, President Trump, you know, with new ideas, new things uh, for us to follow. So, so everyone's been very cooperative, very understanding. I really have to give some, some major uh, uh, kudos to our schools throughout the parish because they were handed a situation Friday afternoon. Uh, most of them after students had already left for the day to, to find out that school was closed moving forward. Those students had left, they didn't know what the plan would look like. Teachers, administrators didn't know what the plan would look like. And most of them by the end of the day Monday, they had an instructional plan to move forward. Uh, if you want a group to get something done, handed to the teachers and the administrators, school level administrators and Livingston Parish, and they'll get it done because they have done a great job with that as far as getting an instructional plan for our students to continue with their education. Uh, you know, I think the only thing that's lacking is that component of, you know, being able to come to school, to have that social aspect to right. be there. Uh, having a, a son in school, he's a 10th grader, so, you know, fortunately we're not looking at, uh, we're not looking at graduation and wondering what, what, what he's going to be doing there, but you know, it, regardless of what grade level you're in, there's activities, uh, whether it be spring football practice, baseball uh, season, softball season, that it, you know, all of that is up in the air at this point. Uh, you know, uh, Commissioner uh, Bonin with the LHSA has stated that you know, he has not canceled any events, so nothing is off the table as far as our athletic schedule goes. Uh, but we just can't practice at this point. And, uh, but he has left open the possibility of extending the seasons into June if school can resume at some point so that we can put some closure to these seniors uh, last year of eligibility. So one of the things you brought up that I, I, I want to iterate real quick, you know, 14,000 meals yesterday at, through 14 sites. Y'all, Denham Springs High School is one yeah. of them. Uh, you know, that was brought together 300 employees started at about six o'clock in the morning you know tell us a little bit about what that experience was like here on site it was a uh, it was sobering you know uh, and, and i really it, it's it's exciting to see that we can still provide that service to our most vulnerable members of the community our students in the need etc in such a short notice and in such an organized way you know i didn't I'm not going to lie, I was a little skeptical on what it would look like at first, but it came together. Our food service personnel and the food service staff that we had on campus from surrounding schools as well just did an outstanding job of putting those meals together. And they started out with 300 and something meals on our site and went back to the kitchen to make more after about an hour. They said, well, we've got, we've got more people coming, we're only halfway through this and we're almost out. They went back and they doubled down and got more food out there so that we could serve everybody who came through. And at the end of the day, I think we ended up with close to 600, uh, 600 meals distributed. Um, that was, it was honestly inspiring, you know, and, and we saw the same kind of thing in the flood with the kind of uh, willingness people had to just get out there and just, there was no, there was no, we can't do this going on. There was, how do we do this? and solutions and, and action put in place to make things happen. There was just no excuses. So when you think about that, and you think about, you know, you are in the curriculum position, correct? Yes, so, sir. and you know, when I walked in outside, there's packets outside for students, you know, they're mm -hmm. communicating with their teachers, you got the meals done, it makes you think, okay, yeah, graduation can happen. If, if, they, if they come out and say, we can try this, we can do this, y'all are gonna find a way. That's right. So, Let's jump back over to you because one of the things that we discussed was sort of two disasters, sort of spirit sure. or <clears throat> bookending mm -hmm. the students uh, experience. One of the things I want to ask you, who was an administrator here now at the central office, uh, you know, you, we talked about it beforehand. I kind of let mm -hmm. you go with it. Uh, can you reiterate what we talked about? Yeah, just uh, how different uh, the two you know, situations and, and instances are, uh, you know, when we had the flood come about, uh, 
we were out of school four weeks, uh, but there was so much uncertainty uh, throughout, you know, uh, early on. I can remember being here working in the school, mopping water out before we had any of the response teams come in, trying to get furniture moved out, things mopped. And I was having parents and students come by extremely upset uh, on the verge of tears because the rumor was going around Down Springs High School was gonna shut down for the year. In other words, we were going to disperse students, send them elsewhere. Then I can remember, you know, two days after the flood making the promise, Denham Springs High School is not going anywhere. My promise is you students will be together throughout this process and will we'll remain together. And, you know, the problem now is, you know, we can't make that promise of when we will return to school. Uh, you know, the, the directive now from the governor says we'll be back on April 20th, and that's fully what we're planning, is that we'll be back on April 20th. That's what we're telling our parents and our students. Uh, but of course, you know, th there's still some uncertainty that, that exists there. Uh, whereas we knew we'd be in school somewhere after the flood. Also, you know, when students were working at home, gutting their houses, going home, uh, once we did start back to school, going home to houses that didn't have sheetrock, uh, school was their their one normal thing. Even if we were platooning at Live Oak High School and it was a different location, they were there with their teachers, their friends. So that was their kind of their security blanket to be able to come to school and to be able to escape some of the things at home. And then for us to be able to have football games and get students on campus, that was a huge thing was to uh, uh, let's continue with football season. And now, you know, these seniors get to the point they're close to being finished. They don't know if there's a promise of, of a true promise of when they'll return to school. And they don't get the opportunity to come back on Friday nights or to go to North Park for baseball and softball games to get back to get together with that social aspect. So that's, that's how these two disasters, so to speak, or these two situations are so uh, different, even though we're looking at about the same amount of time to, to be out of school. Uh, we're just having to handle them so differently. So when you're, and when you're talking about handling differently, you know, I brought up the packets out there. We're talking about instruction. One of the things that we talked to the superintendent about, Joe Murphy, two days ago, uh, was that the best bet was to call your school, was to get in touch with your school or directly with teachers, because every school was built a little differently to handle situations like this. Uh, first, you know, would you all agree with, with, with that kind of statement? Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely would, yes. Okay. So talking about y'all, uh, we talked about the packets outside. Talk to us a little bit about, you know, the conversation you had with your teachers when, you know, they explained the closure and talk to us about what sort of plans you've, you've watched waterfall from there. Mm -hmm. Well, when we finally had uh, concrete information that schools would be closed on that Friday, feels like a month ago now, but it was just last week, um, we had a faculty meeting at the end of the day Friday with our teachers and I had them all in the library and we said, look, moving forward, we don't know what this is going to look like, but we need to make sure that we have a plan in place to deliver meaningful instruction to our students, uh, whatever that ends up looking like. Um, now, our, our parish has uh, Google Classroom resources available for every school in our parish. I believe that's right. If I'm not yes, mistaken. it is available. Um, and that was a platform that a lot of our high school students and a lot of our high school teachers had already used in the classroom. So we felt confident in using that as our primary method of, of getting information out to kids, getting work and assignments and quizzes out to kids where possible. Because in our estimation, every student in some way had touched that platform already. They knew how it worked, they knew how to log in, they knew what was needed to make that happen. So the, the, uh, the conversation we had after school was, teachers, over the weekend, 48 hours, you need to have a plan in place to bring your curriculum to this platform. And on Monday, we're gonna sit down as a team and everybody's gonna share. Those with deep knowledge of the system are gonna pair up with those who have less knowledge of the system and we're gonna get this established for our students. Um, obviously knowing that not every kid has internet at the house, we started reaching out to all of our students, phone messenger, email, cold calling, trying to contact every single student in a positive way saying, do you have access to the internet? And those who did not, teachers were putting together packets, we were getting stuff at, like you saw outside in the front office, for those students without access to the internet to be able to have something that they could hold on to, 
read through PowerPoint presentations, you know, exercises, quizzes, you know, anything that we could do to provide them some sort of meaningful educational experience during our closure. Um, the conversation that we had in the library on Friday afternoon was incredibly positive. I think the teachers, there was not a single teacher in that room that approached that in a negative way. There was not one. Every teacher in there did exactly as we asked and we came in Monday with a plan of action. We hit the ground running and I think the efforts that the teachers put in place made this rollout as successful as it has been. Um, and I would encourage anybody who has not received information or has not been contacted or you know maybe there was a missed call on your cell phone and you didn't recognize it and you just scanned away from it, contact the school, contact us so that if we haven't made that positive contact with you for whatever reasons, and I understand how busy people have been recently, reach out to us and make that contact so that we can get you and your child something in place so that they can continue their education during this uh, during this closure. Let's jump over to you. Sure. As curriculum director, you know, he talked about what they did was internal. I, I would suppose that from your standpoint, that makes you more of a facilitator for anybody that has questions. <laughs> Talk to us about some of the challenges you've experienced since the announcement. Well, from a high school standpoint, and, and you know, each grade band is a little different. You know, our middle school supervisor, uh, you know, handled things differently than the elementary supervisor. From the high school standpoint, you know, we're dealing with young adults, so it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, doesn't mean that the content material is easier for us to try to deliver, but as far as putting the responsibility on the student to access the material, to be able to access Google Classroom, the main guidance that we gave uh, the principals was to provide some meaningful instruction at the high school level. Uh, if Google Classroom was something that was already in place on campus, then that was a great platform to use. Uh, you could have your teachers, uh, you know, tutor the other teachers and bring them up to speed. And students were already uh, capable of using it. Uh, but we did, you know, tell, tell our teachers and principals, if this is not something you're currently using on your campus, now's not the time to start you know to we didn't want to start something totally new that students were unfamiliar with and that kind of varied by campus so when you look at our campuses they're all a little bit different mm -hmm. what live oak high school is doing is probably pretty similar to what Dunham springs high school is doing but if we go look at uh, doyle uh, they may be doing something totally different they may be doing more packets for students to pick up uh, same thing with springfield high school so that's why it is so important if you have haven't gotten uh, contacted by the school and I know there's been a good faith effort by every school to contact every student at this point every parent but if you have not gotten contacted then it's time to contact the school because they obviously have some bad contact information on you sure. as far as telephone numbers or email addresses so contact the school uh, most offices are, are open uh, 8 o'clock until 2 o'clock now. That's amended hours that are out there Monday through Thursday. So contact the school so your student can, can be on these platforms. The last thing we want is for instruction to end at the third nine weeks. Right. We want to be sure that we're carrying students through. If we're able to come back to school on April 20th, we want to be able to pick up with instruction four weeks down the road. Uh, if it extends beyond that, then the same thing. We want to continue to progress. We want to make sure our seniors, number one, are eligible to graduate, that they can get their credits, that they're eligible to graduate. But then number two, we want to be sure that our juniors achieve all of the standards and all of the content knowledge that they need to be able to roll up and be a senior next year. So we want to be sure our pupil progression continues so that once we get to August of next year, our students are ready to progress in that next grade and continue moving forward in their education. Well, I'm glad you said that because I'm going to ask you both <laughs> to give your give this answer to the same question uh, to wrap up. Mm -hmm. You said August of next year, right? So we are rolling into next year. As two, uh, two folks, uh, two guys, two gentlemen, two dads, two administrators, call it what you will, who have experienced one disaster, now going through another, what's the message you, you, you'd want to deliver to parents and to students? Let's start with you, Kelly. Well, I mean, I tweeted something out to the dental student section uh, a little bit earlier this morning because they were... Uh, you know, they, they were reminiscing about better times, you know, and uh, because some of those guys are depressed, you know, not being, a, be, being able to be around their friends, not being able to be here for baseball, softball, track season, all of those spring sports. 
And my message to them was keep on keeping on. I mean, you just, you, you keep your head down, you keep moving forward. Better days are on the horizon. I think that's the one thing that we can, uh, as you go back through history, you look at all of the tough times that America has endured, that, that Denham Springs High School students, Livingston Parish students have endured. It's that better days are coming. And, uh, you know, those events that are so important, they're, they're still going to be held. It may look different. It may not you know, have the same feel to it. But when you get those uh, 480 seniors together for graduation, it doesn't matter where it's at. Uh, you guys are going to be excited with that. And that's going to be the same around our parish at, at every school. And uh, I, I kind of imagine when, when this fear is over with, uh, hopefully we can come back to school. Uh, you know, if the next time you're on campus is to get your graduation gown, uh, you know, I would have uh, probably figured that each school would have their teachers back on campus so those seniors get a true last day of school experience to be able to go around, see their teachers, take pictures on campus one last day, pick up the graduation gown and get ready for graduation day. And uh, so uh, I think that's what is important is people like Mr. Howard, our other principals in the parish, they realize how important those events are to the seniors. And uh, you know they're going to do everything in their power to make sure they have those senior experience to to, to carry away with them when they go to college. You got you, Principal. He, he, he took a lot of the words right out of my mouth, especially uh, talking about how important it is to make sure we're keeping those routines and keeping those uh, keeping those daily things going, especially those events like graduation, prom, stuff like that. What we can do, we we'll, we got to try to keep moving those forward. But I think it's important for all of our students to understand that what we do in times like this really do lay the foundations for the type of person we are as we become adults. Um, whether you're a ninth grader or a twelfth grader, um, how you handle adversity is going to teach you more about yourself and it's going to teach you more about being an adult than anything you can get in the classroom. Um, and I'm not trying to under, uh, under uh, emphasize the importance of the classroom instruction by any means, it's important too, but what are you doing right now to keep making yourself a better person. Even if it's improving things around the house for mom and dad, if it's helping little brother and sister with their homework, um, if it's getting down a couple, th two, three hours a day to, to dig through your homework to make sure you're staying on pace, what are you doing right now to make sure that you are improving on a daily basis? Every day there has to be something that you do to make yourself or your situation better. Lay the foundations and the frameworks for who you're going to be tomorrow. You know, today we're facing this challenge and we're going through some hard times and, you know, th things aren't very pleasant from day to day sometimes, but there's going to be a tomorrow and there's going to be a day after COVID is over. Who are you going to be on that day? Who are you going to be on that day? That, is this going to be something that has brought you down as a person or is this going to be something that has helped you build who you are going to be as a person? And I'm... I, that might be a little cheesy, but I mean that's really how I feel about you know what the students can do during this off time. Well, and just to, to kind of wrap up for our parents and students that are that are out there, you know, tuned in watching, and uh, a real positive is the fact that our parish is full of uh, principals like Mr. Howard that uh, as they make decisions, as Superintendent Murphy makes decisions, as our 40 some odd principals across the parish make decisions, they are making decisions with the best interest of our students at heart. And as long as they continue to do that, which they will throughout, our students are gonna be in great hands. And uh, you know, Livingston Parish is, is going to come through this just fine. We're gonna come out on the other side. It's gonna be great. Well, and one of the things y'all both said was, you know, hopefully there's a little more appreciation for being able to come to school. Yes. <laughs> Again, thank you both for thank your you, time. Thank you. We, we appreciate I know, it. I know I appreciate it. Our viewers appreciate it. Uh, again, Mr. Kelly Jones, Director of High School Curriculum. Yes, sir. Here on, here on the viewer's left, Principal of Denham Springs High School, Wes Howard, on the viewer's right. Thank you both again. And we appreciate you guys joining us. My name is BQ David, publisher and editor of the news. And we will be back with you with uh, Superintendent Joe Murphy on Friday.